Now let's solve a recurrence relationship. If you don't know what a recursive definition is, or if you don't know what mathematical induction is, then you should watch my videos on those two things, and I'll link to those in the description below. But here we have a recursive definition. So our basis is S of 1 is equal to 3, and then each additional value, because when n is greater than or equal to 2, this is true, S of n is equal to S of n minus 1 plus 2. Before we see how to solve this, which is where we produce a closed form solution, let's sketch out a few things that would be helpful to understand the process. You wouldn't normally do this, but I'm doing this so what my process is will appear less magical. So if we have S of n equals S of n minus 1 plus 2, what this means in English is that the current value is equal to the previous value plus 2 which means that s of n minus 1 is equal to its previous value, assuming we can go farther back. So let's say, for example, n was 10. Well, s of 10 is equal to s of 9 plus 2, and s of 9 would be equal to s of 8 plus 2, and so forth, because this term is the previous one to this, and the term that's previous to s of n minus 2 would be s of n minus 3 plus 2 and so forth. We're going to use this here in a moment. So first we're going to do the expand part. So we have s of n is equal to s of n minus 1 plus 2. That's what we were given right here. And now we're going to replace s of n minus 1 by the right hand side. So this says, and I'm going to use square brackets to make it clear what I'm inserting, s of n minus 1 is equal to s of n minus 2 plus 2 plus our original 2. This 2 right here simply comes down to here. And now I'm going to simplify a little bit. This becomes s of n minus 2 plus, there's two 2's, but I'm going to write it as 2 times 2 instead of 4. So why am I doing that? Well, ultimately, when we get to the guess step, we need to recognize a pattern that shows us how the value of n relates to the overall value. And in lots of cases, you'll have something like this. You might have a term that is, you know, 7 times n. You might have a term that was 2 to the nth power. You might have a term that was 5 to the n minus 1 power, something like that. If I replace this with or, I may not be able to see what the pattern is. All right, so that's the reason why I did this. Let's do this again. Now I'm going to replace s of n minus 2 with s of n minus 3 plus 2 plus what we had right here, 2 times 2. And now if I simplify this, it becomes s of n minus 3 plus there's a 2. We had two more 2s. So it's really three twos. And I think I'm ready to recognize a pattern. Right here I've got a three, and that's a three. There's a two, and there's a two. And in fact, if we look at this right here, I can say this is s of n minus one plus one two. So there's a one, there's a one. So what I think this eventually becomes is s of n minus k plus k twos which I'm going to rewrite in standard form as s of n minus k plus 2 times k, right, where this, we would normally have the actual number on the left. Now what are we doing here? We're actually starting at some value of n, and this part right here is working its way back to the basis. So imagine n was 4 to begin with. Well, s of 4 is equal to s of 3 plus a single 2, right, because of this definition. But it's also true that s of 4 is equal to s of 2 plus a 2 plus another 2. And s of 4 is equal to s of 1 plus a 2 plus a 2 plus a 2. So that means that eventually n minus k will be equal to 1. And if we use algebraic manipulations on this, we get that k is equal to n minus 1. So now I'm going to substitute these things into this relationship right here. And this right here becomes 
s of 1 plus 2 times n minus 1, which is equal to s of 1 is 3, plus 2 times n minus 2, which is equal to 2n plus 1. And so my guess, this was the verify step, or excuse me, the uh, expand step, right here. The guess step is that S of N is equal to 2N plus 1. All right, that's my guess at a closed form solution. So how do we verify that? All right, now, just as a way to spot check my work, sometimes I will iterate using the recursive definition through several values and then also use the formula for some of those values just to sort of get a, a feeling that it seems to work. But I have found occasions where I made a mistake in the, verif in the expansion step, excuse me, and if I only check, say, a couple of values from iterating, I would find that like S of 1 and S of 2 were the same values when I used the iterative approach as when I used my closed form solution, even though I had the wrong closed form solution. Eventually, if I iterated enough, I would find the closed form solution at some point didn't match. But it is possible to come up with a mistake here that still can generate a, the first couple of values. Okay? So really what we needed to verify is to use mathematical induction. And that's what we're going to look at now. So remember, we have a basis step. And so I like to think of it as the left side and the right side. The left side is what I was given. And we were told that S of 1 was equal to 3. Where does that come from? Well, that's just what we were told it is, right? So if that turns out to be wrong, there's, I really have no way of dealing with that. So that's just what we're given. But our formula for the closed form solution should still work for this. And so we have S of N is equal to S of N, or excuse me, S of N, excuse me, what was it? It was equal to 2N plus 1, sorry. Which is equal to, or we have S of 1, it's equal to then 2 times 1 plus 1, which is 2 plus 1, which is equal to 3. Those are the same as they should be. Because if we can't even get this, nothing else will matter. The next step of induction is we'll make an assumption. So we assume that S of K is equal to 2 times K plus 1. Right? Basically, that's our closed form solution, but using K. And now we're going to check and see, can we use the formula to get future values. So S of K plus 1 is equal to S of K plus 2. Now where is this? This right here is based upon the given recurrence relationship. Basically, the previous value to this. So if this is K plus 1, the previous value is K plus 2. That's what we really have here. It's just that Everything's been shifted over by one, but it still is the, the formula. But if our closed form solution is correct, then we can replace S of K by the closed form solution to get 2 of K plus 1 plus 2, right, this right here, which is equal to 2K plus 3. Now I want to, on the right hand side, use the formula for the whole thing. So this says, that S of K plus 1 is equal to 2 um, of K plus 1, because that's what the input is, plus 1, which is 2K plus 2 plus 1, which is equal to 2K plus 3, and those are the same. Therefore, according to mathematical induction, we've proven it or verified it. Now, if you weren't sure if this was correct, then, or if you just want to feel comfortable with it, you could always 
use the formula to produce several values, and then use the original definition to produce several values by iterating and make sure you get the same thing. But I don't know that I've ever produced or used induction to show something was really true that turned out not really to be true. I don't th know that I've ever been able to make that mistake because I would have to make mistakes here and here that somehow matched up. I don't know that I've ever done that. All right. So that's one example. Let's look at a second example. So now we have that the basis for our recursive definition is S of 1 is equal to 2. And the recurrence relationship is that S of N is equal to 3 times the previous value, or 3 times S of N minus 1. And that's true when N is greater than or equal to 2. OK? And if you need to see this in terms of S of N minus 1, N minus 2, and so forth, you could expand this. But we're just going to jump right down to the expand part. So this says that S of n is equal to 3 S of n minus 1 is equal to 3 times S, or excuse me, 3 times S of n minus 2. Maybe I should have expanded it. Let's just do that real fast. S of n is equal to 3, S of n minus 1, S of n minus 1 is equal to 3 times S of n minus 2, S of n minus 3 is equal to 3, S of n minus, or excuse me, this is 2, 3, and so forth. So this is the original 3 that we have from right here, and then S of n minus 1 is replaced by 3 of S, in, S of n minus 2, which is equal to... Now, once again, I could just say 9, but that's going to make it more difficult to find the pattern. I'm going to say 3 squared times S of N minus 2. Now, we expand again. This would be 3 squared times, replace this, with S of N minus 2 is equal to 3 times S of N minus 3, which is 3 cubed times S of N minus 3 dot 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 which is equal to what's the pattern here well I could say this right here this right here 3 to the first power times s of n minus 1 there's a 1 there's a 1 there's a 2 there's a 2 there's a 3 there's a 3 so it looks like we have 3 to the kth power times s of n minus k now we know that n minus k eventually becomes 1. And from that, I can get that k is equal to n minus 1. So now I'm going to guess that s of n is equal to 3 to the n minus 1 power. OK? times s of 1, which is 3 to the n minus 1 power times 2. So to make this a little neater, we'll say this right here is equal to 2 dot 3 to the n minus 1 power. That's my guess at a closed form solution. All right, let's verify using induction. So the basis step, so S of 1 was equal to 2. We were given that, the formula, so this is given. The formula says S of 1 is equal to 3 of 1 minus 1. The left one is the input, right? That's n times 2. So 3 to the 0 power would just be 1. So it's just equal to 2. So let's check out. We assume S of k is equal to 2 times 3 to the k minus 1 power. And now we have S of k plus 1 is equal to 
according to the recurrence relationship, 3 times S of K. And now we replace this S of K with our closed form solution, 2 times 3, or excuse me, 2 times, sorry, 3 times 2 times 3 to the K minus 1 power, which is really equal to 2 times 3, which is really 3 to the first power, times 3 to the K minus 1 power. When we combine these, we add the, the powers here, which is equal to 2 times 3 to the Kth power. All right? What would the formula have told us if we just went through directly? Well, this is S of K plus 1 is equal to 3 to the K plus 1 minus 1 power times 2. All right, I've sort of swapped the sides of these, which is equal to 2 times K plus 1 minus 1 is really just 3 to the Kth power. And once again, those are the same. And this is a little easier to be comfortable with because I look at it and say, okay, you just take 2, multiply it by 3, multiply it by another 3, multiply it by another 3, and so forth. So 2, multiply it by 3, multiply it by another 3, and so forth. So there are two examples. What I will do in my next video is sort of combine the approach where we'll have something like this. S of N is equal to, say, A, where it's not equal to 1. S of N minus 1 plus a B, where that's not equal to 0. So you could say this right here has A as 3 and B is 0. And in the previous example, we had A was 1 and B was 2 because we were adding 2 each time. I'll combine those into the next video because uh, it's a much more challenging process.